we are now looking at binary ionic compounds. It's going to be a compound made with one metal and one non-metal. It won't be one atom of each, but it'll be just one metal with one non-metal. Now the metals, some of them have predictable charges, same with the non-metals. So the predictable charges we're going to get the alkaline metals all form a plus one charge. So column one form a plus one charge. Column two, the alkaline earth metals, this forms a plus two charge. The transition metals and post-transition metals largely will do more than a single charge. We do have a handful of them that um, do have a single charge. So in column 11, silver forms a plus one charge. In column 12, cadmium and zinc form plus two charge. And in column 13, aluminum, gallium, and indium form a plus three charge. The other metals, we can figure out what the charge is from either the name or the formula of the compound. For the nonmetals, the halogens, one column away from the noble gases, form a minus one charge. Column 16, the oxygen group, two columns away from the noble gases from a minus two charge. And column 15, the nonmetals, um, three columns away from the noble gases from a minus three charge. We don't specify a charge for carbon. Carbon is just, just not very well behaved. Now, when we name these, these predictable metals are just going to be the name of the metal. Lithium, sodium, potassium, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, silver, cadmium, indium. For the nonmetals, we're going to change the ending to an IDE ending. So nitride, oxide, fluoride, chloride, sulfide, phosphide, selenide, bromide, iodide. And that's actually in the next slide here. So the green are the metals with predictable charges. Uh, we just named the metal. The yellow, uh, they have multiple charges. So we're going to use a, a Roman numeral after the name of the metal to identify the charge that it actually has. And uh, the blue over here for IE. Ionic compound will end with an IDE suffix, uh, boride, carbide, nitride, oxide, fluoride. Let's play with this a little bit more. So the metals, the transition metals, post-transition metals that have more than one charge, there's two naming conventions. The stock system uses Roman numeral to identify the charge, and this works for all the metals. The other system is the Latin system, and this works for some of the metals. So iron forms two common charges. Uh, plus three and a plus two. So plus three, we just call iron three. Plus two, we call iron two. For the Latin system, we have to know the two charges. We have to know the Latin name. So obviously this Fe doesn't match iron. It comes from the original Latin name, ferrum. Um, so out of the two common charges, the higher charge gets the Latin name with an IC suffix. So the ferrum becomes ferric for iron three. The lower charge <laughs> the lower charge gets an OUS suffix on the Latin name. 
So iron two becomes or us. All the predictable charges just have the name of the element. So K plus is potassium. For all the anions, we're going to change the ending to an IDE ending. So chlorine becomes chloride. Oxygen becomes oxide. So let's um, play with the charges first. So strontium, what's the predictable charge? When we look up strontium, we find it in column two. So the predictable charge is going to be a, a plus two, and we're just going to call this strontium. By itself, it'll be the strontium ion. We don't use ion in the name of a compound. Zinc, we find zinc in column 12. That will have a plus two charge. And that will just be called zinc. Aluminum, we find that in column 13. So this area over here, for the predictable charges, we knock off the 10 from the column number, what's left will give us the charge. So aluminum column 13, knock the 10 off, we're left with a plus three. Li, we find in column one, so that'll be a plus one. That'll be our lithium ion. Now, for some transition metals, we will figure out the charge from the name or the form of the compound. So uh, PB4 plus, PB is lead. So four plus we just represent as a Roman numeral four in parenthesis. CR6 plus, CR is chromium. And the six plus we represent as Roman numeral six in parenthesis. For some anions, anions, we're going to change the ending of the element to an IDE suffix. So iodine as an ion becomes iodide. Nitrogen as an anion becomes nitride. Okay, so let's write some formulas from the compounds. So to do this, if we take the charge without the sign and bring it down on the opposite element, we'll automatically get a neutral element. So we bring the two down on iron, Fe2. The three plus from the iron, we bring down as a three on the oxygen, Fe2O3. It's automatically a neutral element, and that's what we need. All macroscopic things have to be neutral. And we look at it, there's no common factors to remove. So our ionic compounds, we want to have the lowest whole number ratio of ions present in the compound. So another one, Fe2 plus iron, 2 plus oxygen. We got a 2 plus, a 2 minus. Right here, It'd be good to recognize that we have identical charges, so we just need one of each. So we need a FeO. So if we bring the twos down, we should recognize that we have a common factor, divide it off, and end up with FeO. We don't want an Fe2O2. So a lead four with oxygen, we bring this four down onto um, the oxygen, this two down onto lead. That gives us a Pb2O4, but we have a common factor of two here. So we're not gonna use that, we're gonna divide that two out and be left with PbO2. So again, for the formulas, in the names and the formulas, we always do positive first, negative second. And we want the formulas to represent the lowest whole number ratio of ions in the compound. Now going the Opposite direction from a, oh, let's continue this way. So writing our, our formulas, silver sulfide. So we have to identify our compound. Silver is Ag, it has a predictable charge of plus one from column 11. Sulfur 
S, predictable charge of two negative, two columns away from the noble gases. So that two we bring down onto the silver. So we have an AG2, that one we bring down on sulfur. We never write our ones. So AG2S will be our formula for silver sulfide. Chromium 3 chloride. Chromium is Cr. The three tells us the charge is a plus three. So that's how we're getting our charges from the name of the compound. Chloride is chlorine with a negative one charge. That one comes down on the chromium. We don't write it. The three comes down on the chlorine. So CrCl3. Strontium selenide. Strontium is a Sr. Selenide is an SE. Strontium is in column two, so it has a two plus. Selenide is two columns away from the noble gases, so it has a two minus. And again, we should recognize that since it has identical charges, you just need one of each. So now let's go in the opposite direction from the formula to the name. So we do the reverse swap here. We're going to take this two, put it up on the copper, take that one and put it up on the chlorine. So that'll give us a Cu2 plus Cl minus. The metal may have variable charges, so we don't have a way to check that. So we're going to check that chlorine, see if it's correct. And why we have to check that is because we might have a common factor that we have to put back in. But chlorine is correct. It should be a negative one. It's one column away from the noble gases. So since that's correct, the copper is correct with a positive charge. So we're going to call this copper two chloride. So we do the same thing down here. We're going to bring this two up onto the titanium, the one up onto the oxygen. That will give us a Ti2 plus O minus. We check the oxygen, the negative charge. Should it be a negative one? No. Oxygen is in uh, column 16, two columns away from the noble gases. So we should multiply by two. Multiply both these by two, so we end up with the Ti4 plus O2 minus. So the systematic name here would be a titanium 4 oxide. This has a common name, so this is a pretty common material that we use. Common name. which is what we'll see on the commercial products that we use, is titanium dioxide. And sometimes we use these um, other names to show that the compound has a, a bit of a covalent character to it and not a purely ionic character. And sometimes they're just leftover stuff in our vocabulary because of old systems. So the last one here, we have silver with a subscript one, bromine with subscript one. That implies we have a AG plus Br minus. We check that. Should bromine be a negative one in the hal halogens, column 17 is one column away from the noble gases. It should be a negative one, so this is correct. Silver is one of our predictable charges. So we don't need Roman numerals on this. So we could check that in this case and say it's, it's correct. So with no Roman numeral now, let's call this silver bromide. And a comment again about the um, References about the elements, the nonmetals being columns away from the noble gases.
So the noble gases are very stable. They have uh, eight valence electrons. Um, we'll define our valence electrons later on, but that would be a 2s and 6p electrons. And they're very stable. Uh, the other elements are trying to get a similar electron structure, the same number of electrons as a noble gas. So the halogens, one column away, need to steal one electron from something to get the same number of electrons. Oxygen group needed two electrons, nitrogen groups need three electrons. On the other side, the alkali metals have one electron more than noble gases, so they lose that electron very readily. The um, alkaline earth metals in group two have two electrons more than noble gases, so they lose those two electrons. We'll be coming back to that uh, need or desire to match up with a noble gas later on in the semester.